What the heck? It's educational. Close the screen, I'm gonna show you. This is most of it. Kinda cool, huh? It's very squishy. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> A underscore D1R3W0LF resubbed for five months. Applied for grad school this week. Fingers crossed. Thank you for the five months. Congratulations. Good luck. What's it taste like? No. No. Try that again, but let me get you in the frame. Wait. People yeah, wow! Fish under's caught ales subbed for the first time. Thank you. Look, work smarter, not harder. <laughs> Dot was waiting for the wind to subside so she could do like a- she did pretty flat flights. Dip is not waiting. Dip is using it so that he doesn't have to pump through half of this flight, which is what, like, 20 feet? <laughs> I saw M Mulan used to do it all the time. She would use the wind so she didn't have to work as hard. I like that in a bird. I think it's cool. Also, this is really far. I mean, I thought, oh, I, for some, I couldn't see him for a second. I was like, what the fuck? This, this is a big jump for him, isn't it? From the last time we flew. Like, he's doing great. That's awesome. All right. I have, um, just this head now. This is the last bit. I'm not going to show you the head. This is too much. Sorry. You know what a rat head looks like. Ah! <laughs> it's actually really nice out it's like not even hot and I bought bug spray and I didn't even use it I haven't thought about it I'm not getting eaten up I think it's because of the wind that was different that was flatter more flat Which one is it? It's flatter, right? That was flatter. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, the head isn't his favorite part because it's really bony, but that'll do. I might give him... Um... Actually, no, because I'm going to feed him live tomorrow. I gave... I gave Dot a little bit more... Um of the rat today. I, it's one, it was one rat between the two of them. I gave Dot a little bit more of the rat today than I normally give her when I split it between the two, but I do want him to be a little hungry for tomorrow because I'm going to do a live mouse with him tomorrow. So, oh, he's still working on it actually. Damn, he's catching up quick though. I, my thought is that I would keep Dip um, a week longer because he's a week younger. And he's progressing a little bit slower, um, in that 
Thank you He's so not much. as confident. Rado donated three dollars. And he was flying a lot, a lot closer than Dot was. But he's, I mean, he's getting there for sure. Interesting. Cool. Um. Does Dot, does Dip just need to catch a live mouse for release? Yeah, that's my, that's my thought, is I want to see them both kill something, and I want to see them even in flight, and then they're going to be good to go. I talked to Connor about it, and I was like, should I do, um, should I do flight release, or should I do live prey training in different settings so I can make sure that they're confident in catching in different settings? Should I do it on different terrain um, so that they, they, uh, they can do that? And Connor is like, once they start killing things, their instinct is going to kick in. You don't have to worry about doing a bunch of tests. It just causes them more stress. Um, they'll, once, once they kill, they'll know how to kill. We should be good to go. Um, so, yeah. Plus, like, if you do the same prey over and over, it just becomes, like, practice. And they don't really need, they'll practice in the wild anyway. So, better off in the wild. But, this is wonderful. That's gotta be 20 feet. Almost. It's gotta be 20 feet. It's hard to tell for you guys. It's hard to tell for me too. I'm not great at that. I don't know. Um, 16 feet, maybe. You can use a phone app. That's true, actually. That, that's a good idea. Um, okay, well, that's a good session. Besides the wind and the Fs, which I'm sorry for, um, from a falconry perspective, from a rehab perspective, that was a fantastic session. I, I, I'm, I, I couldn't ask for anything more from them for today. Dot's last session, Dip is very near to his last session. I mean, the thing about these sessions is like, I don't need to teach these birds how to fly. You can see that. You can tell, like just from watching him fly from this perch to that perch, if I set him free right now, he could fly all the way across this field. Same with Dot. Um, it's just for me to watch them in flight so that I can be sure that everything is, is good to go anatomically. So, that's what that's for. Um, and it's also for building muscle and it's good for them to stretch their wings and um, it's important for them to maintain muscle condition. But it's not to teach them how to fly. I know they can fly a hell of a lot further than this. I'm super happy. Jammies. <laughs> Look at him. You're so close to being ready. You're so close. Look at those big eyes, man. The other good thing about or the thing that I like about these two birds is um, the sear, C-E-R-E, -E, is the part, um, the yellow part on his nose, like where his nostrils are. A nice bright yellow sear is a really, really good sign of health. In younger birds, they're like gray blue. So like American kestrel is one of the ways that you can tell that they're younger because their juvenile plumage is the same as their adult plumage is by the color of their sear because they have darker ones. So when they're younger, it's darker. But as they're getting older, if it's really, really bright and vibrant like, like his is right now, it's a good sign. Um, he's a healthy bird. Check out his feet, too. He's not going to have a problem piercing things with those. They're very sharp. All right. 
Good stuff. Raptorial feet. Three, three toes in the front, one in the back. See that? Good for grabbing. If you had knives for feet, you would want raptorial feet. Or zygodactyl feet. Zygodactyl feet, ospreys can have practically zygodactyl feet, which is two feet in the front, two feet in the back. Or toes, I'm sorry. Two toes in the front, two toes in the back. Wow. So that they can grab Thunder Fury resupped for four months. Peepo pop. Wow. Thank you for the four months. Um, parrots all have zygodactyl feet as well. Yay. He doesn't have a dent either. This is a very handsome bird, isn't it? I know I'm super biased because I love this bird with so much of me. So I love this bird so much. But he's like really handsome. He's sleek and like put together and stoic and smart. I'm really, really proud of how he's grown up. I'm super excited for him. I'm so excited. I think I said this before, but uh, the ideal age for release for these hawks is nine to twelve weeks. And I have to check Thank my so record. But Eric donated three dollars. Do you love to pour dot more though? No. Neither. I spend just as much time with both of the birds. I love them for different reasons. Um. I think Dip is really, really complex, and really he's a really interesting bird to work with um, because he's skittish and he's smart and he thinks a lot more than Dot does, but I appreciate Dot's tenacity. She's super fierce, um, and I think it'll do her really well in the wild. And they're both so beautiful. I'm so proud of them both. I, I can't, like... I can't say in words oh, wow. how pleased I am. Gray Iden resubbed for 15 months. Thank you. Someone said ignored bits. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the bit noise. Um, that's because it was 100 bits. Sorry to interrupt, but what was your current location? Right, so that was a waste. Um, thank you for the dollar, though. What was I saying? I forgot. Oh, the ideal release age for hawks is um, 9 to 12 weeks. And Dot is going to be released at just over 11 weeks. And Dip is going to be released at about 11 weeks as well. Um, which I'm really, really excited about because I was really worried. Like, when I started with the two of them, I was like, I am worried. I thought that I was going to mess stuff up and that it would take a lot longer to release them and i was like i want to do three two-week increments but um what are you guys what's wrong i i don't see it nothing you're being weird more bits. Okay, still, it's, it's, it's 300. <laughs> it's like TTS, man. Um, but thank you. Uh, so, the ideal path for them was three two-week increments, 
but I wasn't sure about that because I thought that they would need more time because I would mess stuff up. This is the first time that I've raised birds of prey from when they were babies. Like not just juveniles, but like baby birds of prey. It's the first time I've raised them from there and they're on the ideal path for rehab. And for my first time doing rehab with a, with a bird of prey like that, I'm super, super proud. Styly on them cheered 300 bits. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Thank you. Thunder Fury cheered 300 bits. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thanks for the bits, man. I don't even feel like I need to jump in my truck to do the outro because it's not hot. It's like nice outside. This is so nice. Look at this. It's beautiful. Uh oh. Oh, a 51 viewer host. Lol. Lola Electro. Thank you so much. That 117 shit 300 bits. Oh, sorry. Thank you for the bits. Guys, look at these cute flowers. By the way. Wow. Anyway. Okay. Um. That's it. For today. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Spherix donated five dollars. What is the ideal age for releasing chat into the wild? I don't know, man. Um, okay. Our guest for Friday. The podcast is going to be at 12 p.m. CT. And the guest is Laura Kojima. I think that's how you say her last name, but I'm not quite sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, she's a herpetologist and a student studying alligator ecotoxicology and behavior. So, um, gators. We're talking about gators on Friday. Um, American alligators are actually doing really, really well right now. So as for like a conservation topic, they're doing really well. However, American alligators have one of the coolest um, conservation success stories ever. Are you sure you meant 12 p.m. CT and not PST? Yeah, it was gonna be 2 p.m. CT, but now it's 12 p.m. CT. I think. <laughs> um, American alligators have one of the coolest success stories in conservation ever. They were they were endangered. They were doing really really bad, um, and they were brought back. Uh, through conservation efforts. So I'm really excited to talk to her about that and talk to her about the potential um, and what was successful there and what wasn't. Um, and then we'll talk about ecotoxicology. Uh, I'm not sure if she does any work studying crocodiles, but I know she's interested in them. So we'll talk about that as well. And we are raising money for... Raising money for... Park Place. Um, partners in amphibian and reptile conservation. That's who we're raising money for. So. That'll be Friday, 12 p.m. CT. Also, oh, there's something I want to tell you guys about. But I don't know if I'm supposed to say it yet. So I'll tell you after I, I have a call to talk about stuff. And hopefully I'll get to update you on some really cool stuff soon. Big stuff. Like, really big, really exciting stuff. Um. So that's good. And then there was an organization that reached out to me um, that they do conservation for porpoises. 
And so I'm going to have them on the podcast. And they also said that they wanted to do um, something more than the podcast and that we could do, they could send me out with an expert to do like whale watching and stuff on the water at some point. So once COVID dies down, then that's another thing to look forward to. I told them that I was super, super willing to travel um, for conservation content creation. Um, So that would be really cool. There's lots of things in the works. I'm really excited. Um, So yeah, I'll see you on Friday for that. Then I'll see you on Saturday for the release stream for Dot. And then I'll see you on Monday for blah, blah, blah. I think that's it. Let's see who's live. Ooh, it's 7.45 already. XQCOW, Mizkif. Does Vegito stream a lot, or does he just stream, like, for fun? Just for fun? Okay. Um... Should I host Sorty? Okay, I'll host Sorty way. Everyone always says host E-Rob. I feel like I host him a lot. Raid Sorty Way. Okay. Getting a raid ready for Sorty Way. I'm gonna go home and eat more sourdough bread and put the birds away. Um, I'm sorry about the wind. I'm sorry about the wind. That always scares me. None your business. None of you underscore business just subbed at tier two for five months. Pop. Tier two. Thank you. Um, I really, I don't know what happened with, uh, with the spot today, but I am sorry that it did happen. Really quickly, look how beautiful this is. Pog. Very cozy. All right, go say hi to the sortie. I'll see you guys.